A uh, bit of a look, a uh, bit of a bit of a look, uh, bit of an update coming out from the Manchester Evening News. Samuel Lucas says some United players starting to take umbrage with Ten Hag's criticism amid concern over recent recent tactical adjustments and grown resentment over the treatment of perceived favourites. Um, I mean, look, I, I, I get worried when Samuel Luckhurst is talking about leaks from the dressing room because he's always been somebody that is more than comfortable to do that. Um, I don't. I don't deny that he's a journalist and that he has every right to do it, but um, you know th this is a this is an outlet that I don't think was ever pro Ten Hag anyway. Um, you know we've all got the receipts; they they weren't particularly pro Ten Hag, and um, they've um, consistently spoken about his Eredivisie obsession. Um, a number of players are starting to grow weary of Ten Hag's criticism as they struggle to arrest their dismal form. United have lost luck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we're not. I mean, this is this is this is this is just perfect. You know, this is a Manchester United journalist. Um, you know, basically the guy who um, is chief reporter for the Manchester Evening News and Manchester United, and he's putting stuff like this. Dressing room sources have told Manchester United Evening News, Manchester Evening News, that some players believe Ten Hag has favourites in the squad who he's unprepared to single out for criticism while they feel others are routinely rounded on by the United manager. And although Ten Hag has avoided publicly naming players who have erred, he has often highlighted the players' failure to follow the rules after defeats. Certain United players also feel that they have been in an, in an invidious position to carry out Ten Hag's tactical instructions, as there is a feeling in the squad that this approach has been compromised by the indefinite absence of Anthony. Um, Ten Hag has had expected to have Mason Greenwood. Mason Mount, OK. Um, I mean, look, I've got to be honest, I'm sort of going to close that down and come back to you because I look at that story and I think, what a crock of shit. Um, and, you know, ultimately, everybody is allowed to make their own opinion. People talk about negativity. I, I just I just don't. I read that article and I think, go and put it in the in the shitter because it's a big load of crap. I've never heard such nonsense in all my life. Um the article itself exposes exactly what I was thinking. Who has he called out individually apart from Jane Sancho? No one. He even says in the article, although he's not called people out individually, they are not happy with his general negativity around players not following instructions. So you've not been publicly called out, but you think you might have. I mean, this is the weakness of Manchester United. And I would applaud Luckhurst because he's probably coming from a position of trying to disrupt Manchester United and Ten Hag because that's how it reads and perception is everything. But it actually just, just gives us more power that the players are the problem at Manchester United. What has Ten Hag done wrong in the last few weeks in relation to what he said publicly? Last time I saw, we'd lost three out of five in the Premier League. Um, I think criticism is absolutely justified. Jadon Sancho's criticism was absolutely justified. No other player has individually been called out. Dressing room sources. Well, I'm sorry. If we're not going to get names, let's all start playing the predictor. Dressing room sources. So let me think. I think Luckhurst was very close to Dean Henderson, who was British. I would say narrow it down to two or three British players that have got dressing room sources. Um, because I'll tell you what, foreign players don't email Samuel Luckhurst with about dressing room sources. This is a very British thing. Um, and it's very British to have connections with the British media. Um, it'll be British players who are doing it. And I think we can all guess who it is who's not playing or not playing well in the team at the moment. And it won't be Marcus Rashford. So figure it out. Uh, dressing room sources, more like Maguire, McTominay and Sancho, says the killer man. Well, if I say, if I speak, I'll be in trouble. But um, um, no comment. Once Qatar takeover is done, uh, if, ever, if it ever happens, hope they let Eric Ten Hag clear the decks of those he doesn't want around at whatever cost. Uh, and that's from uh, Neil. I mean, it's exactly, it's just exactly, I, I'll tell you what, it's exactly the same thing as what happened with Ranić. The same players and the same issues. Um, that's what's happening here. So it's, 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 it's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Um, I've just tweeted it. So ultimately, we are where we are, aren't we? Um, Manchester United players. And you know what pisses me off the most? You know what really pisses me off about these leaks? Is that the Brighton result was really bad. It was bad. The Bayern Munich result 
was a lot better than Brighton. And we've got a big game against Burnley tomorrow night. I, you know, we did the call in last night. We did the preview last night. And after the match, I wasn't happy, but I was like, it's all about Saturday night. It's all about Saturday night. And I think there's a there's a level of optimism. You know, I know some of the players are really motivated and looking forward to Saturday night to kickstart the season. So there's a general consensus that, you know, this is a massive game and this is the game where we kickstart our season. It's not, you know, it's not a drama yet. Um, it's not all over yet. We can turn it around. And then what do we wake up to this morning? Negativity leaked out to the same outlets as per usual from the same players as usual who are moaning because they're not playing. And yet they've had two or three years at the club where they've been consistently shit. And this is what I talk about power play. How can Eric Ten Hag improve this football club when he wants to sell the leaks, but the club can't fucking sell them? And this is what I mean about power play. We've just spent 10 minutes talking about, you know, 17 foreign players. You've got to have nine homegrown players or eight homegrown players in this. It's nine because we only had 16 foreign players. He can't get rid of these players and then they're leaking against him. I mean, can you not do the maths? We've been down this road before. Mourinho had it. Oli had it. Ranić had it. And now Ten Hag's got it. He wants to get rid of these players, not because they're just, not only because they're not good enough, but they're also toxic. He wants them out the club. And Murta and Co. can't get rid of them. So what happens is they stay, they maintain their relationships with these bloody journalists and they leak and then the journalist writes the article and it disrupts the manager and then they survive another manager sacking and they do it again. A new manager comes in, they get a chance, they're fucking shit, they get dropped and they leak again. It, it has to stop. It has to stop. It's the same players every time and they're not in the first team. They're not good enough and when they do get a chance, they're not good enough but they leak they leak out and they create toxicity. How are we ever going to improve as a football club when the club won't get rid of the shit? They're dragging us down again. They shouldn't be here. We had offers for them in the summer. We didn't get rid of them. And now here they are. Do you genuinely think that Ms. Martinez or Inanna or Casemiro or Hoyland or Bruno are picking up the phone to Samuel Luckhurst? You're having a fucking laugh. That's not that's not how it works. And we've been here before. And it's, you know, dressing room sources. You know, it's like the boy who cried wolf. Every one of these journalists that go dressing room sources, you may as well give us the fucking name because we know it's three or four people because it's the same three or four people all the time. And we also know the culture. The culture in this country is to protect British players and blame foreign players. So who do you think the people are who are giving the journalists the info? It's the protected players, you fucking idiot. Of course it is. Come on, I, I'm just fed up of it. I'm, I'm fed up of it. And Man United should do something about it as well. Because if we can figure it out, they should figure it out. And look, Man United can't afford to, literally cannot afford to sack another manager. And we cannot afford this season to go tits up. The players in the dressing room, if you've not figured it out, you should be calling it out. Ten Hag should be calling it out. Look, if we need a mutiny to go where we need to go, kick them all into the fucking reserves, kick them all into the kids, uh, into the youth setup, and fuck them off. Like, that's what needs to happen, but it can't happen. It's what I was talking about, about the power play. It cannot happen, because if you kick them all into the reserves, you've got £200 million worth of player there, on probably about a million pounds a week in wages and the Glazers are going, this can't happen. And then what you want to do is you want to get a fish and whack it around their face and say, wake up. What do you want me to do? I can't pick them because they are shit and I didn't buy them. And when I don't pick them, they're leaking to the press and being miserable, causing issues and you won't sell them. Like in a way, I sort of understand why these players are pissed off. You know, they're stuck in, an, in, in, in a stupid place as well. It all goes back to the Glazers because if you're owned by guitar, all of them are gone. Get out. There's your paycheck. Piss off. But, you know, what we cannot do is let these leaks desta destabilise our season because that's what they're there to do. And this article in the Manchester Evening News and the article that will probably come out in The Athletic and The Telegraph and everywhere else, just know where it's coming from and know why it's coming out. 
Like, we've been down this path before. It's deja vu FC. Players trying to undermine a manager. And what needs to happen is the Casemiro's, the Bruno's, the Rashford's, the Martinez, the, the Varane's, the Anana's, the, the Mounts, the Amrabat's, the Ericsson's, the Pelistri's, the Ganacho's, the Hoyland's, all those players, the Delos, the Regualons, all those players that we're going to need over the next few games, they've just got to block that out and realise the fans are behind the manager and therefore they're behind them. That's the story here. Don't fall into the trap of the moaners because they're your mate in the dressing room. They're anti-united, they're toxic and they need fucking off.